Welcome to my channel, Custom Scrapbook Design by Christy Stubbs, and welcome to another installment of my Scrappin' Saturday series. So today I did a little bit more preparing than I usually do because I am getting to you guys really late in the day Saturday, and I want to maybe do as little editing as possible. So today I'm going to be bringing you a two-page layout using Simple Stories acorn lane available on my website i will link it down below and i did do just a little bit of prep so i don't know if you guys are familiar with kiwi lane but i have been using kiwi lane for years in fact i had canceled my subscription earlier this year and ended up resubscribing to their monthly kit I, I don't always use their stuff, but I do like their quality of their paper and stuff as well. Um, it it kind of falls in the line of Simple Stories quality. I think it's a really good quality paper. So I prepared some 3x5 photo mats. I prepared two 6x12 pieces of the Mustard Color Vibes color, um, paper. So one piece cut in half, and then I've already inked it. And then in the collection, there's the sheet of the tags. I cut all the tags apart and I've gone ahead and inked them. Not sure if we'll use them all or not. And then for my base pages, we're gonna use these two matching sheets. Um, I do have this by the sheet in my inventory as well. That's how come I have got two of them. And then I had already pre-cut one little wavy piece and I was going to cut the other one on camera with you guys and show you my process for that. But when we get to it, I'll show you what I'm going to do just a little bit differently. I found that I w maybe not going to use it the way that I thought I was going to. So that is basically what we're going to start with. I'm going to set the rest of this to the side. Of course, we'll probably use some of the stickers from the sticker sheet. And who knows, we may end up using a few more uh, of the pieces of cardstock in that collection as well. So, my plan with this layout, and what you want to do is make sure you have your plaids going the right way. As you can see, that dark brown stripe goes horizontally on this page, and I've got it vertically here. So. I want to line it up horizontally so my two pages match. And then also you can see, let me turn this one upside down, you can see that they don't line up if one is upside down. So you want to kind of watch that with your pattern paper. This pattern happens to line up perfectly and I do want to make sure that it does that. Now I mentioned that to you guys now and you may find once I get this page put together I don't take my own advice and line that up but hopefully I do so this 12 inch by 6 inch piece is not going to go exactly in the middle my plan is at the bottom of one of these pages we're going to line these tags up just to the edge of that angle on the tag and we're going to line the tags up side by side. Now, when I cut my tags, I may have been ever so slightly off. So we're gonna go ahead and line the little triangle up. And then if we need to, we'll hang the excess off the bottom and then trim the bottom. I, I used to be really good at being able to cut precisely, but my eyes are starting to really give me a little bit of a challenge. So I kind of struggle with cutting things right on the line anymore, but that's okay because there is always a solution to that. I always say that there are no mistakes in scrapbooking. Everything can be fixed or modified. So in the tags, I had kind of gone along and found maybe matching colors for the two pages. So I think we're gonna roll with something like this. And I did one extra one because I originally had this one in its place 
And I kind of want to use the Happy Fall, y'all, just because I really like that one. This one does say it's autumn time. This one has autumn on it. This one has fall in it. I don't think it really matters. I just really like that one versus this one. So I think that's the one we're going to use. So we're going to save these ones for the opposing page. And I think I want to alternate and go this direction with those. So I think what we will do is line these tags up first of all. And we're going to line them up from the top and we're going to see which one is the shortest one. And it looks like this one here is going to be the shortest one. So we're going to go ahead and tape the bottom of that one down and we're going to come in ever so slightly from the end because I believe they don't quite cover the whole end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook this yellow piece down because I'm going to be able to line it up based off of where that little edge is on this tag. So we're going to go ahead and get this down. And we're just going to slide that right under that tag. And we're going to line this edge up. And that looks about perfect. Now I'm not going to press that down real tight because you all know that I'm probably going to end up pulling that back up. So we've got the first tag. All right, so we went with the blue. I'm going to go with that brown. Maybe we'll throw the white in the middle. It really doesn't matter what um, order you put this all in. And I'm just checking to see where the edge of this is going to end up lining up. And I might have been wrong. We might be able to go to the edge with that first tag. Which, if we can, I'm going to reline up my colors because I don't think I necessarily wanted the blue on the end. I kind of wanted that brown on the end. And then I kind of had this gold one in mind next. And then the pink. So that's more how I wanted that lined up. All right. Before we hook any more of those down or any of them down, we need to decide what we want to do with the holes in the top. So I'm going to do something just a little bit different this time than um, what we normally do. Normally, I would just fill all of those with ribbon, but today I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to take and we're going to look at our sticker sheet for one thing, and then we're also going to look at some of our cut aparts and our foam stickers. And what we're going to do is take some of these smaller stickers that are on here and we're just going to cover that hole on that tag. So see there was already one of those, I don't know, moths there. And so we're just going to match that on that one. And then let's see about something for this one. We've got the butterfly there on our sheet. We do have another butterfly. Might be a little big, but let's take a look. Actually, I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking that. We're going to go ahead and put that one there. And then we are going to take some seam binding. I do have some of my custom um, dyed seam binding here, and we're gonna run some seam binding on this tag. Add a little bit of color to it. And we're just gonna go ahead and put a hole in there and feed some of that 
through. We're not going to have real long tails on it, so we're just going to feed a little loop through from the back. And then we're going to pull our ends through that loop. And we're going to pull it tight without tearing the tag. And then we'll just trim it. So trim it up nice. And then we're just going to add that to that tag. Because we're going to have photos up above that. So we really don't want to block a lot of the photo because it is going to it overhang the photo um, just a bit. Okay, so once I'm lining those up again, it does appear that we've got just a little tiny sliver we can leave on each end because the tags don't 100% cover all the way to the edge of the paper. Well, again, I think I'm wrong. I think that does cover. So let's get let's get the first one in place. Okay, and remember we're wanting just the right where the corner of that tag is to be at the bottom of that piece of paper. We want to bring that down as far as we can and we'll trim the bottoms off to get those all lined up. All right, and we're going to go ahead and do that all the way across, line up the top angle. And the reason I'm lining them up that way is so that you've got just that little bit of that mustard going all the way in that angle. You want to make sure that that's fully covered. All right, and then what do we want to do? We're going to go ahead and tape all of these down. I think we're only going to use the seam binding on this one. And I'm just going to set this one here real quick. I'm not going to press it down because I want to measure where the tags end up widthwise to make sure we're Looks like we're going to line up pretty good. Okay. So let's hook this one down. Okay, now it looks like I might be just a tad low on this pink one. I want to bring this up just a little bit. this one up okay and then we'll add the last one here let's just check that one more time for the width and see I'm just a tad long so because this little ribbon goes closer to the edge and the sweaters a little further away from the edge on this one I'm gonna trim just a sliver off of this tag. All right, and that should be enough to make that fit perfectly. But because I trimmed that edge off, we're going to want to ink this edge again. All right. So I've got that edge inked and let's get this piece put on, lining up the corners right there. Okay, so those go nicely across the bottom there. We've got a little bit of overhang on some of them. Obviously I can't quite cut them all even, but that's okay. We will remedy that problem by putting our full sheet in and trimming it off. Let me 
All right. Okay, so that is the start of the left hand page. Actually, this is going to be, I think, the right hand page. So the strip that I had previously cut using the Kiwi Lane Cedar Trails 2A, I had cut this and I was originally going to run it down the center like that. That was kind of the plan that I had in my head. But then once I started playing with this a little bit, I kind of just liked the look of, let's pop this up and see, here we go. I kind of just like the look of the wave at the top of this edge. So I think we're gonna just do that. So I'm not gonna need to cut or trace a whole new piece like this because when I cut that out I left an edge like it's very it does line up it's just off a little bit but that's okay so I'm just gonna take and cut this edge straight because we only need this edge tucking tucked out of the bottom of the mustard piece so let's just trim piece. Get that under the cutter. About like that. So see we've got the same essentially the same thing that we'll use on the other page. And I'm just going to cut the branding strip off with my scissors. And then we'll ink this piece real quick. And we only need to ink the one side because the other side's going to be tucked under. But on the opposing page, I think we're actually going to, um, rather than go all the way across with the same design, meaning rather than do this other page the same exact way we're going to change it up a little bit give it a little bit of variation so we do have another piece of the gold mustard color in the six by twelve piece but this time i think we're going to tuck this piece down here And then we're going to run the tags to the top, like so. Okay. And already I can see I'm going to want to make a change. So, and my change is this Live With a Grateful Heart. I really don't want it on that background. So I think I want to pull it down here so that it's got this gold mustard color behind it. I think it helps to make that one pop off the page just a little bit more. So we're gonna pull this one. I'm just gonna lift that off. We're gonna utilize that one up there and we're gonna pull this one in its place. Now, only thing about that is this one would have fit perfectly without trimming the edge of that one. But that's okay. We'll just slide this over. That little tiny sliver will never be noticed. So let's go ahead and put this one down. That's what I get for being too efficient and trimming stuff right away. We could have left that little sliver on there. That's all right, we'll slide that one over. And 
and it still looks just as good. All right. So let's go ahead and start piecing this one together. Now, the difference is, is this overhung the gold ever so slightly, just the top of the tag did. Now, the other side, we're not necessarily going to have that issue. So there'll actually be a little more of the gold showing. So let's see what that looks like. I mean, we can overhang it slightly if we want to. I kind of want to see where the gold pieces line up when we do that. Because maybe we will end up um, putting these at the bottom and just continuing the pattern all the way across. Not really sure yet. Let's just take a look at this and see what we think. So you might have one idea in mind and then end up totally changing it once you get to it. This is kind of what I had in mind to begin with. But I'm not so sure. I love that. I think we might go ahead and carry this all the way across. I think I'm going to like that a little bit better. So with that being said, let's go ahead and put our pages side by side. And then we'll know exactly where to put our yellow piece and we can get it lined up. So let's do that and get it set in place. I'm gonna leave the tape a little low from the top because we wanna be able to tuck that piece in. All right. Okay, and let's go ahead and tuck this piece in as well. And we'll just kind of line it up with the other one. Get them lined up side by side again. And look at that, it just carries over perfectly. All right. I think I'm a little high on this one. If we want to go. Just a little lower. See, this one lines up at the bottom of the brown. Looks like I actually went crooked, so we're going to pull that one up and lift it back up to there. And this one appears that it actually needs to go lower which makes it so those don't exactly line up. However, our pages aren't gonna be sitting right beside each other. You know, you're gonna have them a little bit apart, so they're gonna look like they line up enough. But I've lined up the top of the hump there against the bottom of the brown line. So I'm gonna to wanna to do that on this one as well and get that just a little better lined up more along those lines. So let's put a little tape down here to hold that in place. There we go. Okay. I'm liking that. Now we need to line up our tags over here. And I'm gonna kind of replicate this pattern that I've got going on here. So we've got the dark brown as close as possible. They're of course not gonna absolutely match. And then we're gonna wanna do this one. 
And then our pink one. Gotta have our pink. Would I even be scrapbooking if I didn't use pink? And then our blue one. And then our white tag. All right, so let's, I think we'll use the ribbon on this first one and just put it on both ends. And I think that's all that we'll use just so that we're not getting in the way of any of the photos. And we'll use the same color ribbon, that custom dyed ribbon. And just make the loop, pull it through. Careful not to pull too tight. It's very easy to pull too tight and rip your tag. All right, so let's hook this one down. And we're gonna wanna line up on the edge. Being careful to line up. on the mustard piece. There we go. Line up the next one. And then the pink one right next to it. And then the blue. And then this pretty cream, creamy white color. And we go right to the edge with that. Okay, and our bottoms aren't lined up, but remember, that's not a big deal. We'll just trim them off the bottom. And then we'll have a nice clean edge across the bottom of this one as well. And then um, when we get when we get done, we'll just go back and re-ink the bottom of those tags. So there you go, there's all the little slivers from that one. All right, so I'm liking the way that that's looking. And then we've got our photo mats, which we're gonna tuck those under the top. I think we should. So let's see if we've got room to do that. Something like that, and I think we can fit, well, we should be able to fit three of them going across. Uh, the photo mats actually measure three and a quarter by five and a quarter, so that they'll easily hold a three by five photo. So now, this is where we can take the time and kind of decide or try and get them evenly spaced side to side and then get them spaced the same from the top on all three of them. Now this is where you could take, I'm just gonna see if we wanna put it all the way above the tag you know, I think we will. I think that that just looks a little bit nicer and you still have a little tiny gap from the top of the tag to the mat and then a little bit of matting at the top of the mat, the photo mat as well. Yeah, I think that that I think that's the way to go with that. And then I also um, am going to ink these photo mats. That's something that I didn't do, but I'm just gonna do that off camera quick. And then we'll put all of these down. Okay, through the magic of editing, now we have the photo mats all inked and we're ready to put them down. So, 
Once again, we need to try and get that placement just right. So I'm going to set the one off to the side. And we're going to go ahead and get these lined up. And then we will adhere these down. Whoops. Okay. And if you want to grab a ruler and get them just right, feel free. I am not going to do that. We're just going to eyeball. And that looks pretty darn close to me. So to make this easy, I'm going to hold that in place. And put a little at the top. Try and get that straight. And then we're going to go ahead and put a little at the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this sideways. And just make this process just a little easier on myself. And the nice thing about this paper, and you might not be able to see it from the distance you're at, but you can count the dots. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got this spaced pretty darn good. Let's make sure it's lined up across the top. Just gonna one, two, three, four again. There might be a little just a touch off. If I go the full four, we've got a narrower than gap than we do on this side. So I'm gonna pull it in ever so slightly. Again, if you want to be precise, you can measure that and get it perfect and for me that's close enough all right so let's grab the other one and let's do the same thing I'm gonna line them up sideways because that's just gonna help oh now look at that these takes must just be slightly taller possibly Thinking right about there is going to be fine. Now, this is where it could drive you crazy if everything's not lined up perfectly. Actually, I'm going to lift that up because I think I'm a little too far from the top. I think I actually want to get just a little bit closer to the top. Because you're going to see the tops of these tags lining up with the bottom of this. But... There's always a few things we can do to hide a little bit of that as well. And I'm not sure why I just lifted that up like that. Would have been easier to leave it down and hook it down like I did the other ones. But that's okay. We'll repeat that process with this one. One, two, three, four dots. One, two, three, four. All right, let's take a look at that. I am liking the looks of that. Now, this paper here looks like it is just ever so slightly long, and it is. So we're going to go ahead and take and trim that off. You can put it in your cutter, or you can just line the edge of your scissors up and cut it off. There we go. And then this one is as well. So we're just going to take, line our scissors up. Cut 
that off. There we go. It's just a sliver off. All right, so there's the basic part of our layout. Um, now, of course, comes the fun part. We get to put, put our stickers. I've got some foam stickers here. And I've got some cut aparts, which actually, actually my plan was to maybe put this cut apart in place of a photo right here. And I didn't do this on my scrap on Saturday, but I did in my group on Sunday. I've got a little sketch sesh. Um, what do I call it? Sketch sesh. Sunday sketch sesh. So I did a sketch last Sunday and on the sketch, they had actually done the same exact thing with the cut apart. Only the cut apart went to the top and then there was quite a bit left at the bottom. But I think we're going to keep the mat the same size and then still use this three by four cut apart on there. I, I like the look of the little bit of extra ivory underneath all of that. So we're going to just do that. And let's see. Let's see what we've got for our foam stickers. So I really, oh, we've got quite a few. We've got autumn. Sweater weather, family, um, home, fall. We could pull that blue back up here. We've got a little bit of the blue down below. The blue would be pulled in just about any of them, so we could use any of those. I'm going to move these 3 by 4 cut aparts off of here because we're either going to use that one Kind of blends a little bit, so maybe that's not the perfect one. We could do that one. I don't like the white on there. That really blends as well. I don't necessarily want that one. I love that saying, but I'm not sure I want that color unless we change the color of this mat. And I don't want the white. The pumpkin sure cute. I could even pull that pink. Let's see what the pink looks like there. That one's not all bad. That one looks really nice. And then there's live with a grateful heart. So we need to decide on that. I'll leave that little pile of those there throw the rest off to the side because we are not going to use any of those. And let's take a look at what we've got. I kind of am leaning towards this happy fall right here. And let's just cut it out. And then we can lay it in place until we get everything else lined up and make sure that that's what we want to do. So we've got happy, and do we want to put fall right next to it, or do we want to run that across the two pages more like that? I'm leaning towards that. So I think that's all we want out of these. So I'm going to set those up above. We may end up pulling something else. We'll see. Happy fall. And then we've got our cut aparts here. And we've got our nice little fireplace. We've got a little home. Got a raincoat, a fox. I've actually got a couple of the fox. Another home. Could line up a couple of the homes there. And then we've got the acorn and a heart. 
which we might put that at the top of a tag. I think we're going to pass on the raincoat. We're going to pass on that, pass on the mushrooms. I don't think we need another saying on here. we got a lot of little sayings on all of the tags. We do have a coffee mug with cocoa. A pass on cozy, pass on that fox. We got tea bag here. We got the cuckoo clock, which honestly we could run that and run the little pine cones down between. And sweet home, another fox, a wreath cat on the bench. We'll see about that one. Another home. Let's maybe set that up there to make some decisions here. We've got a cute little fall hat, which we might just put... Oh, we're going to put that right there. Matches the hat on that tag. We've got another acorn. We're going to set that there for now. Flower, the word fall... We've got Love Gathers here, a little sign, which we might hang up there. Another acorn with a heart. Uh, maybe we'll pull that one there instead. We're going to keep this one in the tray. We may go back to that. The frying pan we don't want. Record player. How about the socks? Do we... I don't think we need the socks. And I actually think we're going to pull that fox out of there because this is, um, that's too close. We would need to do that cuckoo clock right there. We've got that home there, but I think I want to pull a little more of the pink up here. I think that that one kind of stands out a little bit better. Okay. And then we've just got a leaf and a bird and one more leaf. So we might just use those. I think, and there's one more acorn. Let's pull that and set it there. I think that's all that we're potentially going to use out of the die cuts. So we're going to set those aside. And then, of course, we have the sticker sheet left. And then we're going to be about done. So I'm just looking at the cuckoo clock on here. It's a lot smaller than the one up here. So I think we're going to stick with this bigger one. I'm kind of liking the looks of that. I do like the house. The house is each on the end. We might pull the fireplace because it, size-wise, it looks a little off. And we might just move like that little sign there. And then we've got the leaves. So we've got leaves on here as well that we could use. So maybe we do a die cut leaf on each side and then add a sticker leaf as well. I'm liking the looks of that. And then we really want to add, I want to cover a couple more of these holes. So we're, let's maybe kind of alternate that. We've got our sticker die cut and another die cut. So maybe a sticker here. And we could easily just use the heart sticker right here. Oh, let's see if we can get it to cover. Nah, I don't like that. So let's just stick that back on here for now. Hmm. Actually, I think we might slide the acorn over there and I do like the knitting needles we could easily 
cover that. Okay, I like the looks of that one. And then we do have the little pile of books with the... Oh, we do have the bird on the branch right here. The branch covers that other bird. So let's find our scissors and let's just cut that branch off. And then we've got the bird. Don't know that I love that. We might put the branch back. Let's see. Yeah. I still am not loving that. We need to figure something else out here. Let's see what else we could do. Maybe we don't need to have the birds. Maybe we I don't like the books either. Okay, we're going to find something that will work there. Pull the books off here. Let's throw that branch back on there. We do we have the die cut one. Let's see if that one fits any better. Not really. I guess we could move it up. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Okay, so we'll just use that one. And then let's go ahead and use this other acorn right there. All right. I kind of like the looks of that. All of them have a little bit something different going across the top of them. Kind of like the way we've got the scenery set up across the top. And now we just need to pick which 3x4 we want to use. And I think that one blends in too much. I love the thing, but I think it blends a little too much. And I think that one blends too much as well, but darn it. I like the looks of it. We might just end up going with that one. You know, the other thing we could do is I do have the sheet of four by fours. If there's anything there that we maybe could trim down and nope, I don't think so. I think we'll, we'll stick with this one. So let's get it inked and then we'll get it put in place. And I'm going to ink real heavy on it because I really want it to stand out. All right, so... I like this one that it's got the little bit of pink again. It's pulling that pink from everywhere else into there. So as long as we're at it, let's go ahead and lightly ink all of these die cut pieces so that they're gonna blend in just a little bit better. My furnace is kicking on, so it's gonna get a little bit loud here for a little bit. I don't know what the weather is, for you guys, but it has literally been raining here and dreary all day, which I'm not gonna complain. Never complain about rain in these parts. Um, rain is good, but it has been just a little cloudy and dreary today. 
perfect day to spend in your craft room. So I hope you guys are all finding a little bit of joy in your day and getting to spend some time doing whatever craft it is you're doing. I'm going to maybe make the assumption if you're following my channel, hopefully you are a scrapbooker and hopefully this finds you inspired to work on a little bit of your own scrapbooking. I love the Simple Stories collections. Um, they're by far one of my favorite. And I do love the pages with the tags, but I always find I have a lot of them left. So today I was just trying to come up with a way that we could maybe use up a few more of those tags so that we didn't have so many left over when we got, get done working with this collection, kind of wrap it up. This might be the last page that I do utilizing this collection. You guys can go back. I do have a few other pages. I may try and do a little walkthrough of all my pages utilizing this collection as well because I did use it within my private group as well. Um, so I did get a few more layouts done that you maybe haven't seen. All right. That one's stuck under there. Let me get a hold of it. I tend not to have a lot of fall pictures, but this collection is inspiring me to take more fall pictures because it is such a beautiful collection to work with. All right. Did I get them all? I think so. All right, let's start hooking this stuff down and wrapping this up. So we've got our acorn. I love all the acorns. I think I've used them all up now. We've got our cute little bird on the branch. Another acorn with the heart. Goes perfect on the pumpkin spice season tag. And then the winter hat or fall hat that matches the hat and sweater. Live with a grateful heart. Acorn in the heart. Go nicely with that. And then we're matching that saying live with a grateful heart again on a different print. Reminding us all to be grateful. Alright, and then we'll stick our house down. Do we want to stick it like that, or do we want to stick it down where I had it before? Maybe down where I had it before. We'll hang the sign from the top. All right, before I stick that leaf down, let's stick our foam sticker down. And generally, I always add a little glue to that. I'm gonna skip that step today because I don't have my glue readily available on my desk. You don't have to do that. It's just something I kind of got in the habit of doing. They're gonna stick and last just fine without it. But let's line these pages up so we can line our words up. All right, and now let's stick our leaves down on both sides. Okay, and then our little clock, which is adorable. And I love that I can hang 
So the little acorns fall in between the two mats. And then our pink little house on the end. All right, now let's add just a couple more leaves. Um, let's see. Let's go with a few on this side because we've got a little more space on that side because the word fall is shorter. And then let's add a gold color leaf. Add a gold color leaf over here. All right, let's see if there's anything else we need to potentially add. I really think that maybe we've got enough. I do have this heart that's kind of free still, and we might stick. No, I don't think we will stick it in there. I'm going to stick it at the bottom of that tag right next to the Autumn Love. And that is it, guys. We made it through. I am not going to edit anything out of this video. We're just going to run with it how it is. So hopefully you guys have stuck with me to the end. If you have, I appreciate you watching very much. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do. Hit that subscribe button too so that you're notified every time I upload something new. And... Be sure to go over to my Facebook group too and ask to join. Um, I do post more ideas, tips, trips, tricks, and inspiration there. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I use, I will have linked down below for you. Check out my website. Uh, I really have a lot of beautiful scrapbooking supplies there, junk journaling and card making as well. So have a happy Saturday. And I'll be back with you guys again next Saturday. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.